everyone's heard how Paul Revere warned the people of Boston that the British were coming. Well, here in Virginia, Jack Jouette made a similar midnight ride, and the Trekkers are going to take you along his path. We start out at Cuckoo Tavern in Louisa County, and from there we'll travel across the Piedmont region to the Monticello, where he warned Thomas Jefferson that the British were coming to capture him. Finally, we'll end up, just like Jack Jouette, at Swan Tavern in the city of Charlottesville. The total distance he traveled that night from Cuckoo to Charlottesville is about 40 miles. I'm David. I'm Frank. And I'm Alfonso. And, and we're, we're Virginia, Virginia Trekkers. Trekkers. And we're here today in Cuckoo, Virginia in the Piedmont region. We're getting ready to take you on a 40 mile stretch to the city of Charlottesville on this very busy road. We're going to be tracing the footsteps of Jack Jewett, also known as the Paul Revere of the South. So if you're ready to go trekking, let's, let's go, go trekking! I'm standing right here next to 33, State Road 33, and it is a very, very busy road. And all the way back in the days of Jack Jewett, back in 1780s, this was just as busy. Obviously there were no cars, there's horses, uh, troops, uh, travelers going back and forth, but this road was the main route that would connect Richmond to Charlottesville. Now Jack Jewett couldn't take this road because the British troops were on this road, so he had to take a different road, which we'll talk about later. And here we are alongside that busy road that Frank was talking about. Behind me we see what could have been the Cuckoo Tavern. It's not the actual Cuckoo Tavern because that no longer exists. But this is probably what it would have looked like. Taverns were very important back in the day for anybody because it served as a stopping point where they can rest and they can get uh, their supplies and um, rest their horses. So that night, June 3rd, 1781, Jack Jewett was asleep on the lawn. He heard the British troops going by and he knew that he had to warn Governor Jefferson. So he hopped on his famous horse, Sally, and started a very treacherous route to Charlottesville that we're gonna to try to take you on. All right, Trekkers, we're on our way from Cuckoo to Milton, which is gonna be our next major stop along Jack Jewett's ride. And we came across Three Chop Road. Three Chop Road actually started as an Indian trail, and they used to put three notches in the trees to mark their way. Back in the day of Jack Jewett, Three Chop Road was a one continuous road from Richmond all the way out here into the mountains. And, um, but because of development, more people move into the state of Virginia, that road has been cut up into pieces. When we were out on Mountain Road, you could see exactly how large and how wide and how busy that road was. And now you're gonna see how skinny uh, and treacherous Three Chop Road was for Jack Jewett. So when Jack Jewett was traveling down Tree Chop Road, it was just a dirt path and the, it was overgrown. It wasn't all nicely trimmed like it is now. So there was branches, there was brambles, all these thorns. They were hitting his face, hitting his legs, hitting his horse as he traveled. And they said that he still had the scars from his ride on his face and his body through the rest of his life. He was a brave man to do that night ride all the way to Charlottesville. And luckily, that night it was a full moon, so he did have some light along the way. After riding many hours through the backwoods of Virginia, Jack arrived at the Ravana River. All right, Trekkers, we've made it to the next stop along Jack Jewett's path uh, to Charlottesville. We're just outside the small town of Milton, Virginia, and I'm happy about two things. One, that we're not riding horses, that way we can walk tomorrow morning, and that I'm glad that we're not filming at the same time that Jack Jewett was riding. If this was the actual ride, we would have left around midnight, and we would have arrived here about 4 o'clock in the morning. So we're going to head down this path, we're going to get to the next stop of Jewett's ride, and we're going to go see Dave. Alright, so 4.30 in the morning, still night out, Jack Jewett comes to this river, the Ravana River, and he's been traveling through the back woods of Virginia all through the night. He was a big guy, he was 220 pounds, 6 foot 4, that's taller than me. And he got to this river, and y'all heard of Paul Revere, he only had to travel 15 miles on nice roads. Jack Jewett, 40 miles on backcountry roads and crossing a huge river like this Ravana River here. He's almost to Charlottesville, so let's keep going. It wasn't a long distance to the Monticello, but it was all uphill. All right, we're in one of the most famous spots in all of Piedmont, and that is Jefferson's Monticello. Jack Jewett had to ride all the way out here to Monticello because Thomas Jefferson and other signers of the Declaration of Independence had to flee Richmond because it was captured by Benedict Arnold. Jack Jewett came out here to warn Jefferson and the other people that were staying at Monticello, then he headed into, uh, into the city of Charlottesville to warn the rest of them. And while we're not going to visit Monticello today, you can check out the Virginia Trekkers podcast of Monticello. From the Monticello, Jack traveled down to the city of Charlottesville. Alright Trekkers, we've made it to the center of historic Charlottesville. 
right behind me is the Albemarle Courthouse, which is where Richmond's uh, government, or Virginia's government, fled uh, after Richmond was captured. And behind me, that building, that courthouse, has been used as a courthouse continuously for over 200 years. Pretty cool stuff. I believe Dave and Alfonso have found Swan's Tavern. It's going to be our final stop on this trek. Well, we started at Cuckoo's Tavern, and 40 miles later, at the end of Jack Jewett's drive and destination, here we are at Swan Tavern. This tavern was also owned by his father. And here at Swan Tavern, he warned more people in the Virginia government who were staying here, and most of them escaped. There was one guy who was too injured to really move very fast, and so Jack Jewett, he had on the garb of an important person. They put this other guy in regular person's um, outfit and when the British troops were trying to chase him, they, they chased Jack Jewett and said this other guy, he was able to escape. And then Jack Jewett went on and Sally took him a lot faster than the British troops could go and he escaped as well. So Jack Jewett saved many people's lives that night. All right, so we've come to the end of our podcast about Jack Jewett and all we've been doing is talking about his horse. So we had to find some horses ourselves. We found some out at the Pony Academy outside of Charlottesville, Virginia. And this is our friend, Trip. And Jack Jewett, after his famous ride, he went on into Kentucky, which at that time was part of Virginia. And he helped found the state of Kentucky and he even brought horses into Kentucky. And he had 12 kids. And later on in his life, he was awarded two pistols and a sword for his bravery that night. For more podcasts, visit www.virginiatrekkers.com. Keep on trekking. Jack Jewett traveled over 480 miles to settle in Kentucky, and his house is still there. It's called the Jack Jewett House. And one month later, I went there. Hey, Trekkers. I traveled all the way out to Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky, to show you where Jack Jewett settled after he did his famous ride. He came out here to Kentucky in 1782, married a woman named Sally, and they had 12 children. And on his way, he passed right through the Cumberland Gap. Be sure to check out our Cumberland Gap podcast to see that area. He went through the Wilderness Road, and one story his family told about his trip on the Wilderness Road was as he was passing a house, he heard a woman screaming inside. He went in there, and her husband was beating her up, and he tried to stop him, and the wife hit him over the head with a pan, and the bottom of the pan gave out, and the pan was stuck around his neck, and he had to go find a blacksmith to get the pan off. But that just shows you how Jack Jewett cared about people and tried to help people out all through his life. Well, I'm here at the Jack Jewett house. I'm going to show you what that looks like. Right in a second. But first let me show you what Virginia used to look like. It used to be a big long state made of West Virginia and Kentucky. Jack Jewett took the Wilderness Road out through the Cumberland Gap and into where it is now Kentucky. Kentucky doesn't become a state until 1792 and then later during the Civil War West Virginia became a state in 1863. Alright so behind me is the Jack Jewett house. This is where he actually lived and while he lived here in Kentucky he served um, he represented this region in the Virginia General Assembly while it was still part of Virginia. And then when Kentucky became its own state, he represented this region as well as a state legislator. And one cool thing he did while he was here in Kentucky is he imported horses and cattle from England here to this region and he helped start the whole famous horse industry here in Kentucky. And I'm going to show you some horses in a second. Right across the street from Jack Jewett's house is this horse farm. And that's all I've seen here in Kentucky is tons of horse farms. So here's just one example. And thanks to Jack Jewett, he helped start this horse industry here in Kentucky. Do you see something up in the window of Jack Jewett's house? Could that be Sally? I don't know, but let's sing the Jack Jewett song. Jack, Jack Jewett heard the sound and knew it. Someone had to warn them, someone had to do it. As the sky turned yellow, he reached the Monticello. Everyone was saved that day because of this fine fellow. 